Hello, what have we here? Hi everybody, this is Jason Duran, um, J Duran Art 911, the Dark Hunter guy, uh, person on the uh, internet, guy likes to draw comic books totally for free, I guess, right now. Um, this is a, a piece of fan art that is going to be published in the upcoming comic, Dragon Rage, A Cradle of Embers, now available on Indiegogo. I urge you to go out there and get it as soon as possible and enjoy it and let it become part of your life. It's going to be a good book. Um, so there's this character named Trago or Trago or however you're really supposed to pronounce his name. Uh, <laughs> um, so he's like the big bad buff guy, kind of a protagonist, kind of an anti-hero maybe. I don't know. I haven't read it yet. Uh, it's still kind of hush-hush about what the his uh, role really is. It sounds to me like he's uh, the guy that has to stop the main character, but then I, I'm betting that they're related somehow. I don't know. But that's just speculation. Don't bank on that. So um, I'm kind of like a kind of a snarky, smart aleck. You know, I've got like a, I just do a parody. I grew up on a lot of Mad Magazine, so I just think of stuff in a funny way and parody things all the time. So here's me. Parodying uh, some of this book that I have no idea about. But I think this is kind of cool. This just started off as kind of um, an idea I had early in the morning waking up one day. You know, um, what if Trago is just like a bodybuilder? You know, he's this big bad dude. So I'll draw him in the gym. I'll take this big mystifying character and put him in a normal setting like a gym. <laughs> and uh, here he is just on his cell phone, whatever. So I'm going to go through the process of making this. And um, just so you know, the point is here... Um, when you're going through something, like you're trying to, you have this image in your head, you have an idea of what it's supposed to look like, you're not going to nail it probably right off the bat. Unless you're a pro. Okay, if you're a pro, you'll probably nail it. You've done this a million times. But I would dare say a lot of process videos from these professionals show them erasing a lot, starting over, and doing things different, you know, the next time, so on and so forth. So, um, don't think what I used to think. What I used to think was that if you're a good artist, you would just draw something and it would happen and blah, blah, blah. So I kept messing up. The drawing didn't look like I liked it. I was a failure. I was never going to succeed at drawing comics, at drawing anything. This is wrong. I've been told recently, you know, every good artist erases. <laughs> Bad artists do not erase. <laughs> uh... So I was, oh, I was trying to think about that. But you know what really made me want to get back into drawing again and artwork? And I was watching a Jim Lee live stream. I forget who he was drawing. I forget what he was drawing. But he got about, you know, 10, 20 minutes into it. Said, I don't like this. He just raced it. He, he threw the paper away and started over again. And then this next iteration, he just kept erasing and erasing and redrawing the stuff. You know, the leg, redrawing the arm over and over again until he got it right. I was astonished. I was like, what? Uh, that set me free. That put me back on the same track as I was back in high school. Just I want to be a good artist. I want to draw what I want to draw. I want to draw cool stuff, and I'm going to get it till I get it right. So this is the Procreate time-lapse replay. You know these are kind of grainy, so bummer. So here is uh, me. I went and found a photo. I wanted to be able to design and do different things to Trago without having to worry about getting the proportions right and wrong. So when I found the buff dude talking on the phone, and I just I needed that hand and that forearm kind of a thing. Uh, that's what I really wasn't wanted, and maybe how the way the the tricep like merges into his trap kind of thing. So this is kind of the pose that I wanted. But Trago's gonna be looking up at you and me, giving kind of a little smirk. So this is the first iteration, All right? There he is, got that grin. He's got the phone, doing the peace sign. I drew a line there. That's going to be like the squat bar. He's kind of just got done with the set. And he's, you know, kind of kicking back. And his fans are watching him. He's like, hey, man, yeah, peace, bro. Bro, everyone in the gym is a bro. Uh, first, I just wanted a kind of an up-close, cut-off, um, you know, kind of intimate photo of him, you know, like, hey, what's up? But I said, I'm going to do the whole thing. Him standing in the squat rack. I'm going to actually draw feet. The final frontier, right? Um, so here I found a, a good 
squat cage on the internet that seemed to be about the right size, or seemed to be about the right size. And uh, here he is just dialing his head. This is like the third iteration. I actually draw his whole face here, his everything. Um, and I realize I still haven't really got his uh, pose right. So let me dial it in. Drawing, 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 drawing. So he's still kind of scratchy lines. I'm still moving his arm up and down, trying to figure out the right kind of pose for him. Um, roughing in some clothing, roughing in the legs, roughing in the feet. <laughs> Bless me. Okay, there's that one. Okay, there's quads, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then there's the next one. And I start taking these digital tools where I can just manipulate them around. See where his head got big? Boop. Right there where his head grows to a size. When once it did that, I look at his head and I'm like, that looks like a normal proportion guy. Like um I know Trago's this awesome character, very powerful, but you ever seen movies, you know, actors like uh, Vin Diesel. Tom Cruise, those guys, uh, they're giant on scene, but you see them in real life, they're like 5'2", you know, so that's kind of what I figured that, you know, Trey goes a normal sized guy, but when he goes um, in for a shooting and the film, it ends up, he's like, you know, he's the rock on on the set, he's a normal guy when he's working out in the gym, so uh, I think this is the final pose, I decide like, yeah, this is the one I'm going to do, okay, even with the you know, I think I decided there that uh, when I get in the squat rack, that would be way too low. You don't set up the bar for squats, you know, like at your rib cage, lower rib cage level. You get it maybe in front of you. That's even low right there. But if you can picture him down, trying to get that on his shoulders, you know, he'd be, even that's still kind of low maybe. But uh, where it was before, that was way too low. So I just moved the bar up, added a few extra plates. Um, if I wanted to be total parody, I would have put a bunch of like seven or 10 plates on there, you know, but I didn't have that kind of time. And, um, doing circles like that is a pain in the neck. So I'm still roughing in. This is still sketch mode. This isn't the ink mode. So I'm going to fast forward to ink mode here. Right? There you go. There's my final pose. I decided on the final composition, um, zoomed out a little bit so we can be, uh, maybe the phone, I guess is dead center right there. Trago, you catch him in between sets. I don't know if you've ever been a bodybuilder, done squats, when you've got the belt on. The first thing you do in between sets is you take that belt off. Just unvelcro it, unclip it, unbuckle it, because you can't breathe and you're trying to recover from your set. So that's what he is. He's uh, kicking back in between sets and he's documenting doing 405 50 times. <laughs> on his uh, cell phone app that documents his uh, his workout here. So I'm just uh, trying to use single lines. I'm like, oops, I'm drawing on the 50% layer. Uh, I don't know what happened, but I started drawing in black or gray. So that's not going to work. <laughs> I redo that whole arm. Um, I really wasn't sure what he looked like, actually. All I had to go on was some of the the stuff that's on the Internet, and I had a trading card that I got for free when I signed up on the mailing list. So that's all the reference I really had on him. But here he is um, being fleshed out by me. So I decided I'm not even going to try and draw that outfit. I'm going to put him in a gym outfit and just, uh, cause I know what those look like, but um, I'm dialing the Trago arms, the cell phone, etc. Fast forward a little bit here. I'm doing some light rendering, dropping a little bit of blacks, doing a little feathering. I'm trying to get myself psyched up for drawing the feet. Cause I know how a challenge that is. Um, I'm going to draw the belt just from memory. I've been around weight belts my whole life. I should be able to draw one of those from memory. Uh, well, my whole life, since I was a teenager at least. And I'm going to draw... Um, he's got... Uh, I'm pausing, I'm pausing, I'm pausing. Okay, so now his name is uh, Trago... Jimmy says in Spanish it means to bring or bring. So that's his little his little phrase here. So I have these tools in Procreate that helps me make text. But I don't know if you've been around weightlifters in the 90s and 2000s. You are you weren't cool unless you had your own weight belt with like your name on it or something. So here he's got etched into the leather belt his motto. Some guys would have like Bible verses or their nicknames or whatever. Um, so here's my... Uh, my version of workout shorts atop muscular legs. 
my best uh, estimation of what that would look like. Uh, cause I don't have muscular legs anymore. But I remember what I used to look like. There's the knee sleeves. I'm just dropping some heavy blacks on there to make sure you get the idea. They're kind of like neoprene and kind of snug and tight. All right. Um, and color those appropriately later on. And the knee sleeves are like uh, red on the outside with a black strip down the middle. Then become the, the lower leg. And I tried several versions of different kind of scales or what that would look like. I have scales on your shins. To me, the like the fish scales kind of look stupid. I didn't like how that looked. Uh, I think I erased them. We went with like a dot scales or just putting the shading in there. And then that didn't look good. Uh, I finally found uh, the perfect balance later on, but it took a while. That's the good thing about digital is you can re redo stuff. You can undo. You can liquefy. You can distort. Different things like that. You can just straight up delete. So he's going to be putting some final blacks in there. Giving some volume to his scales. Suggesting that it's kind of uh, shiny at the same time. Uh, go down here to the shoes. See that scale pattern? That didn't work. I didn't like that. I just undid it. I decided to draw the musculature into the shins and the calves. And then later on, I'll just go back and figure out to do about the scales. I figured you have to have the form underneath first before you have the clothing on top. So that'll look okay. So you have um, using the Procreate shape tools to dial in the barbell with the weights on there. And I've been looking at Olympic bars since I was a teenager, so... Those also I should be able to draw from memory. I did trace this power rack, but I used some of the um, shape tools in Procreate in order to dial in, make it nice and uh, clean. So I think I'm finally whacking out them shins. Nope, not yet, not yet. I'm stalling. Uh, I tried a perspective grid. Uh, it didn't really work that great. Uh, there you go. The shins are just going to be kind of like uh, rows of scales. Making sure that I include that tibia bump in the center there, which I will dial in better during the coloring part. So somehow he uh, blends from dragon skin into normal skin here by the shoulders. So uh, find a way to render that out. I'm starting to render the uh, the power rack and the uh, plates here. Pretty exciting stuff, right? Well, in Procreate, you can do this thing where you can make straight lines and you can lock them into the parallel, um, or the 2D grid that's going in front. You can even make it 45 or 22 and a half, um, 90 degrees, you can bend a line. Uh, you would start that by you know making a line and holding your Apple Pencil on the screen until it becomes a line that you can just move all over the place. You can add a second finger, hold onto the screen, and that line will slap into place at, at those uh, several angles um, until you find the one that you like. Usually I'm just using um, straight up and down for these uprights. Oop, for these uprights. And then um, eyeballing it for the angles here. I never really got a good 2D grid going or a one point perspective grid because the, the, the point is way off to the right. It didn't look good. So. I did all the final rendering here. I think I'm dropping all the blacks I can drop. I was trying to do a little uh, noodling on the, the shins there just to tighten them up a little, make it, give them some depth down here. I even decided to draw like some a gym bag and stuff. I didn't know what else I could put on there. There's a picture of Ronnie Coleman re recovering from a set of squats, and he's just sitting there. He's got his protein shake, I think. He's looking at a magazine. He's doing something with his hands, looking down. There's like a... A Jesus sticker on the wall. It's just, there's plaster cracks and stuff. It's just, you know, just regular Joe working out kind of thing. That's kind of the feel I wanted here, but I kept running out of ideas of what to put on the floor around him. I was going to put like a, <laughs> a jar of severed limbs or something. Like, a, but I was like, nah, I don't even know if he's like a bad guy or not. But anyway, he's some kind of a supernatural warrior. So he's got enemy souls. Uh, and it's protein powder. That's what it's made out of. Some people have whey. Some people have casein. Some people even use soy. But not Trago. Trago says, always, always recover by eating the souls of your enemies. Okay. 
putting some extra plates sitting around like he's he's uh he's doing some drop sets all right here's the colored background nice blue to contrast with his red all right laying some flats in there for the characters and the objects now this is kind of strange i went where like um I thought it'd be funny to have like different posters on the wall. You know, people have motivational posters up in their gyms. Well, the motivational posters are like all these dragon movies. So that was kind of a funny idea. And then went back and was going to spray paint on them and stuff and do different things. Um, you know, I'm getting the colors off of the trading card here. There's an image of it on the internet, so that's where I got it from. But um, anyways, I digress. We have the... Uh, Movie posters in the background. And I thought this would be a funny idea. This is the version I showed Jimmy first. He loved it. So, oh, yeah, that's going in the book. And then um, I started thinking, you know, this is for keeps. This is a real property that's going to go out there that could become, you know, a movie, video, game, or a cartoon or something. You know, who knows? So um, I went ahead and uh, gave him a version with just the dragon logo on the wall too and he said yeah it's probably more prudent to have that on there and i'll show you that in a minute too here we have um me trying to dial in like metal scales i guess you call it i wasn't sure if that's exactly what they're supposed to be but the trading card looked like it was metal so i know light bounces off of metal a little different than it does cloth and skin not as diffuse but more concise in different places I tried to accentuate the edge and have uh, an area of where the light bunched up together to at the very precipice or the tip, the apex of whatever shape it was. And uh, I think it turned out okay. I think it turned out okay. So I'm throwing out some highlights. I got my yellow light up here. I got my blue light coming from his back. And so I'm just kind of uh, trying to guesstimate where those things would hit. There's going to be some light bouncing up off the floor too. That's going to get to him. So... You just kind of guess, figure out where all the stuff's going to be at. Look for a little bit more, yeah. Dialing in, dialing in some of the weight stuff, some more lights, some more ambient lights here. Starting to lay down some colors for his accessories he takes to the gym. Using a lot of primary colors, trying to keep it uh, as complicated as possible. All right, so there's that. And I had this idea that what if he spray painted on some of the uh, posters or, you know, they're defaced a little bit so you can't tell exactly what they are. Or, um, heck, why don't I just parody those? Make it the pink dragon. Make it that chick with a tattoo that uh, resembles a dragon instead of the girl with the dragon tattoo. You know, whatever. Um, Crouching Tiger, Obvious Dragon, something, I don't know. But I was trying to make up all these things just to um, D specialize these posters so we could use them. But in the end, he said, just send me the, the dragon's head on the wall. That's kind of what we went with. We went with the dragon's head. So, um, this is where we ended up here. It's pretty cool. Nice in depth, but even this wasn't uh, good enough for me. I'm looking at this. This is cool. It's a great shot. Good perspective. Good everything. Um, Good coloring, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But when it came down to it, I figured that maybe this would be better because uh, lawsuits, property right, you know, intellectual properties, etc. So he said, "Yeah, send me this." But I was looking at this the other day, and I was like, "This still kind of plain." Wouldn't it be great if this was the cover of a muscle magazine? You know, back in the day when they used to actually have workouts and stuff. Um, to the, nowadays, we buy one of these workout fitness magazines. They're either a Focused um, mostly on CrossFit, not on bodybuilding anymore or powerlifting. And then they're also focused on celebrity interviews and who's in the latest movie, etc., etc., etc. And most of them are not being printed anymore. They're all online. So um, this is my version of a muscle magazine cover. So here you have it. That's it. I just thought it would be funny. You know, like I said, I grew up on um, Mad Magazine and parodies and all that stuff. I see everything kind of a snarky point of view. And I just, this is funny for me. So there's, uh, <laughs> there's all my great ideas here. 
Uh, maybe they're not 100 percent funnier, you know that that great, but too bad. So, anyways, this is going to be printed in the upcoming comic book coming out called Dragon Rage: A Cradle of Embers. It is currently on sale on Indiegogo. I want to say on sale. It is currently a project being funded on Indiegogo. When you buy something on Indiegogo, you're not really a buyer; you're a backer. You're supporting a cause. Now, Page One Comics is a um, a new company starting up with some professionals at the helm who are reaching out to everyone for help um, in funding this comic book. They're trying to start a new company uh, to bring about uh, different properties and things that probably aren't out there. And um, this is one of them. If you like uh, dragons, swords, sorcery, whatever else is going on there, you like the fantasy genre, this is going to be the book for you. And plus, it's going to have two pinups. Uh, one, like this one here, is totally done by me. Another one I did the colors on. There's another video for that. Um, you can uh, go check it out on Indiegogo. The link is going to be in the description, as well as the Page One Comics website, where you can go and read a sample of the book on the Page One Comics website. That's awesome. Um, and then you will also have a link to my own personal project. It's called The Dark Hunter. If you took Star Wars and Minority Report and smashed them together along the guidelines of Acts chapter 9 in the Bible, that's what the story is. Go on uh, Webtoons and check that out. It's totally free. Link for that will be in the description as well. Um, I wish you a good evening, day, afternoon, whatever it is at your end of the world. Um, thanks for watching this. Uh, if you want more content like this, leave me a comment. If you like, like it. Subscribe to the channel. Um, process videos are fun for me because I get to talk about me. So uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.